hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel uh today's video we are going to talk about connecting python with the docker postgres sql uh this is one of uh, the most important requirements for any programming language to connect to a rdbms or a non-rdbms system and then work with uh, like doing the crud operations create read and update and delete so let's get started and see how we can connect python with docker postgres sql so before we can actually see how we connect Python with the uh, Docker Postgres SQL, uh, there are a couple of things which we need to make sure that they are working. The first thing is basically our Docker desktop. Uh, Docker desktop is actually uh, available for both Windows as well as Mac OS. So let me start off with my Docker desktop. So I'll just run that. And uh, this application, I can use it uh, visually to uh, see which containers are running, which images are already there. And if you see, I have a Postgres container, uh, which is right now stopped, but I'm going to just run that. And uh, yeah, my Postgres SQL container is running and it is running on the by default port. I've mapped the container port with the actual port number of uh, Postgres SQL, that is 5432. Now, the second thing which we need to understand is, uh, let's say we just want to connect to this uh, container image of Postgres SQL. So I'm just using an PG admin for app, uh, which is uh, more likely a kind of a visual app for connecting to a Postgres container or a Postgres database. And then uh, visually we could see those tables and do some queries and everything. Uh, if I just need an analogy, it's more likely a kind of a SQL Server Management Studio, uh, which we use to connect uh, to the SQL Server. So let's try connecting to the uh, server here. And uh, I need to give the password over here. Uh, and then I simply say OK. And if you see, uh, I have a database called as test. And within the public schema, I have two tables. One is the department and one is the employee. Uh, let's say I just want to use the query tool and I want to simply use uh, select star from dpt. And when I do this, um, I'll just be able to get uh, whatever the records are there within the department table. And if you see the dpt table is more likely one ID column, D name and location. So a very basic table with four um, uh, records and three columns. Oh, sorry, uh, three columns here. So now what we need to do is I need to create a Python script that can actually connect to this running container of um, uh, Postgres SQL. And uh, we can actually do then the CRUD operations. So let's get uh, uh, started and see how we could actually do that. Um, I'm going to go back to my VS code. And uh, if you see, uh, in, even in my last video for the virtual environments, I'm actually into a, a Python demo folder where I've created a virtual environment. We can activate that. Um, and uh, if you have uh, not seen my uh, virtual environments video for Python, I'll post the link for that. Uh, but fundamentally, uh, firstly, let's try uh, doing that. So we'll just use a source env bin and I'll just simply say activate. So once I do that, I'm actually loaded into the uh, environment of this. So which looks fine. I'm into the uh, virtual environment. Now I'm going to install uh, one of the Python packages, which is psycho pg2. Uh, if the psycho pg2 doesn't work, you could also install a psycho pg2 binary. So I'm going to install that. So let's say pip3 install uh, psycho pg2 and then I'll just use a binary. So once I use this, uh, because I've already installed it, uh, but in case you have not installed it, once you do that, it would install that package. And that's the package we'll need to connect our Python. Uh, with the, what you call as Postgres SQL and that too in running in a uh, container image within the Docker. Now, fundamentally, uh, whenever you do these kind of connections or other stuff, uh, you should uh, follow the best practices like uh, .env files or like um, uh, storing your credentials in a separate file and then reading those through certain packages. Um, but I'm just going to do uh, within the same file. This is not, of course, as the best practice I'm trying to do, but this is only for a demonstration purpose. So I'm just going to do within the same file. And uh, your passwords, uh, I've, I've kept a password on my name, uh, which you should never do that. That's not a recommended practice for using your names, first name, 
last name or date of birth within your passwords but this is only uh, something which I'm demoing it and once it is demoed I'm just gonna remove it so uh, for that purpose uh, I'm just using that but in any ways I'm not recommending to use it in the same way because it is not the best practice now let's get started and see how we could utilize that so what we are going to do is the first is I'm going to use uh, the cycle PG uh, uh, to as let's say PG so that's the module I'm gonna import which I need that and then I need a couple of variables which I'm gonna use so let's say host name is equal to I'm gonna use a local host and then the second is let's say the database and the database is the test uh, I actually showed it to you in uh, the PG admin so the database which we are going to connect is the test one so that's why I wrote a test or uh, whatever the database name you have you could use that uh, then the username uh, username is technically going to be Postgres that's the by default username of uh, post uh, Postgres database and then the password and I've just kept it as my name one two three something like this uh, of course this is not the best recommended practice you should keep your passwords which are hard to crack long with special characters and not your choosing your first name or last names okay and finally we need a port also so that's what it is like four five four three two uh, which is the port number for connecting on to that now once I've defined that, so I'm just going to use pg.connect and I'm going to supply all those parameters is equal to host is equal to host name and then I'm going to use user is equal to username and then uh, password uh, is equal to password which I've defined as a variable and then uh, db name, uh, db name is like the database name so you just define that database variable and then finally port is equal to port oh, I'm sorry that's how it should be okay so this is how I'm actually connecting on to the um, Postgres database with the help of uh, psycho PG to uh, module uh, within the Python now the next thing what we need to do is uh, I'm just gonna define one like let's say let's read the data from the table so I'm just going to define another function, let's say read data and uh, this function is going to do that stuff for us. So what we are going to do, uh, oops, I just missed that. So once I connect it, it is going to give me a connection object. So I use that. So I say con dot and I'll say uh, because I need one cursor. So I'll say con dot. So, so I'll use that function it gives me an object to the cursor and then I can use the cursor to execute any SQL statement so let's say I want to execute select star uh, from dpt so that's what I want to do and then um, I just need all the records from there so I'll, what I'll do is I'll say records is equal to cursor dot fetch all now you could technically do fetch many or fetch one but I'm just gonna do a fetch all because these are for four records so for the demonstration purpose I'm just gonna use that so I'm gonna fetch all the records and then finally because we have all the records we know there are four records so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do for D in records and I'm just gonna do a print statement and it's an F string so what I'm gonna do is let's say um, ID is and I'm just gonna pass D of 0 now 0 means the index of the column which you are trying to use now that particular index is basically used uh, by let's say uh, because if we go back to the let's say our database query so ID is gonna be represented by column 0 this is 1 and this is 2 so the index always starts from 0 it's just like an array format so that's what we are trying to do uh, ID is 0 and name of department is oops I just need to move afterwards and name of the name of the department is and I could just use index of one and then and location is I could just use index of two so that's what I need to do now that's what it has done uh, so it all looks good and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call this function so that when we run the file so this is what it executes now if you see I'm running the docker 
I'm running, I'm able to connect to the database, I'm able to see my records. Now I just want to see whether I'll be able to connect my Python uh, script with the help of a PsychoPG2 binary package to connect on to that Docker uh, container of Postgres. So once I run that, and uh, let's say if I run this, it tries to run that and it says pg.connect. Now it gives me an issue over here, uh, which is uh, uh, invalid password. So let's see why it is, oops, uh, I've just kept it in this, the uppercase. So let's try running it one more time. So if I run this, yes. So let me, what I can do is I can clear out and then run it again. So now if you see, it is able to get all the four records. So if you see the ID is 10, department is accounting and location is New York. So department is 20, department is name is research and then Dallas. So these are all the four records that were picked up from Postgres and you could see they are all exactly the same uh, records. Those are four records we are able to pick it around. Now guys, this way, uh, it's more easier, like you could just use one of the modules out there, install that, connect it to a, even a full-flown um, uh, Postgres, or you can connect to a connector also, let's say, uh, to a container also. So, so now let's see how we could actually use uh, the, let's say, uh, insert part. So I just want to do the insert data into the table. And um, I, I do definitely create, let's say, one more function. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it around here. I name it as, let's say, insert data. And then um, for inserting data, let's say, I just want to create, uh, there is a new department number, which is, let's say, 50, right? And uh, I'm just going to and uh, supply the, let's say, department name is equal to test department so that's one and then the location i'm gonna supply let's say vancouver so that's what i want to do okay now when when you do this so you need to do a cursor again to get that and then you have to uh, specify a query execute so what i'll do uh, i'll just try to uh, insert query i'll create a new variable let's say insert query is equal to i'll say insert and I'll use a F operate uh, string so that I could uh, avoid those uh, SQL injections or anything. So I'll say into department and then what I need is ID, D name and then location. And then the values are technically department number. And then uh, I need to put it into a bracket because the values goes into a bracket. And then uh, I need to put them into, let's say, D name. I need to close it because that's a string. And then finally, I need to do, let's say, location. So that's what I need to do. And then finally, I need to close this bracket because the bracket starts off of the values. Now, once this is done, uh, I could just use execute, cursor.execute, and then put it insert uh, query. Now, once the insert query is done, it should actually be inserted. And then I just need to do is uh, simply, let's say, uh, cursor dot commit and sorry con dot commit so which i need to do that because i am I'm, I'm actually committing that transaction so it's committed everything looks fine and then if you want to display any message uh, record inserted in the department table right so that's done okay now in order to see this uh, what we can do uh, we'll just use let's say another function uh, which is uh, over here so we'll just use firstly insert data and then we want to capture the read data also so that we could see whether the records are inserted or not so once i run this if you run this out so it says record is inserted and once it starts reading it actually reads the new record also which is 50 test department and location is vancouver so if you go back to the database let's say this tool and then run your query again so you get the 50th which is perfectly fine for us now let's do the another one which is your uh, update so let's say i want to do an update one and uh, insert data is done so this is an update and uh, I want to let's say specify test only. I just want to remove uh, test department from here. So what I can do is I can just change the query update 
uh, department and I just want to set set uh, D name is equal to and I want to supply which is uh, D name and I don't need the location because I'm technically not updating that so I use this one so close this D name and then finally I need to supply a where condition where ID is equal to let's say uh, department number right because I want to change it for 50 okay which makes sense now what we can do is we can just use firstly I'll close this and then I'm just gonna use uh, a different name which is uh, update data that looks fine so firstly let's read the data and then let's call the update data so the read data would show the previous record like the old record and then the update data would show me or the update data would do that and then i'll call the read data again or i can show it from the let's say database itself so and i'll just simply say record updated in the database so that's the query uh, print statement i want to display so i'll just click this it reads that everything is fine update the data the data has been updated let's go back and now this is the old one test department if you run this so this is now only test okay which makes fine so perfectly the update also works and the last one within the crud is your uh, delete one right so let's use our delete statement so delete data uh, from the table so I just want to remove the department number 50 record, which is fine. And I just want to remove, name it as delete data. So cursor, and then finally delete from DPT where ID is equal to department number commit and record deleted in the database. That's all, that's what we need to do. So all looks good. I'll just close everything. And then finally, I just simply say delete data. So once I run this, so record is deleted from the database. Let's go back. So 50th number record, if I run my query again, that is gone from the database. So I hope guys, uh, this makes kind of a sense, like a basic CRUD operations with Python by using the PsychoPG binary module. And you can connect to a Postgres SQL full fleshed RDBMS, or you could even connect to a Docker container, in um, which is definitely the case what we demoed it in this video. Uh, so I hope guys, this is gonna help you to kick start of your journey with uh, Python and as well as connecting to the databases and creating different kinds of applications for business. I'll be coming back with more videos. So if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe it. Thank you.